Hello everybody and welcome to Project Trade. This is the trading highlight show, all of the relevant replays from our testing of trading strategies. Today we're on a trend-based strategy, that means we want some directional movement from price. All of this up and down scale where price is whipsawing without a true purpose, that's no good for us. We want a lasting trend with zero retracements, shouldn't be too much to ask for. And our key indicator for the strategy will be the Ichimoku Kinko Hyo indicator. It is designed to understand price action in its entirety with just a single glance less than a second looking at this indicator and you will know exactly what's going on with price current and past it is a chump resistant indicator can't go wrong right potentially still confusing as to why we'd be such a heretic trader as to only test a single indicator in a strategy but this indicator it does have multiple indicators within it a well layered indicator as it were five separate pieces make it up and we are going to be using most of them if you do want the full lowdown on the ichimoku kinko higher then we have a video linked in the description going into more depth but here we are just going to give a brief overview of the parts that we're using first it's the Tenkan Sen and Kijin Sen lines as you can tell from looking at them they are effectively moving averages both their formulas add together the highest high and lowest low in price from a look back time frame and divide that total by two so for the faster Tenkan Sen line it looks back at the last nine periods for its highest high and lowest low and the Soa Kijin Sen line looks back at the last 20 six periods to do the same their result is then plotted as a data point for each period and those data points are connected together as we see on our chart the faster Tenkan Sen line is in white and you can identify it from how it hugs much closer to price than our slower Kijin Sen line in blue does the other part of the itchy indicator that we're going to use is the Kumo aka the cloud the cloud is a price region between two lines which are known as the Senku spans or the leading spans Senku span A is calculated by adding together the Kijin Sen and Tenkan Sen values from that period and then dividing that figure by two. Senku span B is calculated by taking the highest high and lowest low in price from the last 52 periods and dividing that number by two. You will notice that Senku span B uses the same formula as the Tenkan and Kijin lines, but looking back even further than those two do. Take note that when plotted onto the chart, both of the Senku spans are actually plotted 26 periods ahead of the current price. They're attempting to get a view of future price action as well as indicating to you that price is likely to be uncertain of a direction when it's inside the cloud don't want price in between those two senku spans but those are the parts of the ichimoku indicator that we'll be using let's answer how exactly they're going to get us into our trades we'll start with the ichimoku cloud which is going to essentially act as a filter for us since it's trends we're after that leads us to where we are only going to take buy trades when price is fully closed above the ichimoku cloud and only sell trades if price is closed below Below the Ichimoku cloud. If price is inside the Ichimoku cloud, suggesting there is price uncertainty, then there will be no trades in either direction. But that's just our filter. We are not going to actually enter our trades based off of the cloud. We're leaving that job to the Tenkan Sen and Kijin Sen lines, the Ichimoku crossover. It's the basic signal that's always taught when the faster Tenkan Sen line crosses above the slower Kijin Sen line, then we will enter a buy trade if our cloud permits it, and vice versa for a sell trade if the faster line crosses under the slower simple stuff but let's take a look at an example of that just so we understand what we're saying here we are it's a sell trade example in this one price comfortably closed below the cloud for most of our chart and so we're looking for opportunities where the white Tenkan Sen line crosses beneath the blue Kijin Sen line and we get that opportunity here so we sell off the market at that point and judging by the next dozen or more candles that come after our entry things are looking pretty dandy for us with this trade then just reverse the logic around for a buy entry example we want white going above blue whilst it's above the cloud that happens here for us so we get into a neat buy trade and after a few periods of price ranging we see it rockets to the good for us and we are a winner well these look pretty good though i am wondering if we can actually find real trades like these example ones when we get out onto the charts they seem too good to be true either way it goes at least we now understand exactly how we are going to enter into our trades but before we dive onto the charts we also need to understand how we're going to get out of the trades how will we manage our money once we're in them firstly we'll do the old trade split classic so abracadabra our one trade becomes two sub trades let's give ourselves some diversity in our money management why not try a couple things out instead of being all in on one methodology to help us out with all this we are going to use a crucial piece of the ichimoku indicator that's the kijin sen line the slower moving average so sub trade a will have its stop loss at the initial kijin sen value from where 
we end our trade. And in a simple one to one risk reward ratio, we are going to mirror whatever distance that is and set the same distance as our take profit level. Then for our sub trade B, we use the same initial Keijin Sen value, but it will be a trailing stop loss on this one. So each period that the Keijin Sen line moves in the direction of our trade's favor, we will manually trail the stop loss along with it. The trailing stop loss, it is just in case we do get one of those unstoppable trends. We'd hate to miss out on the biggest moves that are going. Just to be safe, a niche rule that we're going to apply for both of our sub trades is that if the Keijin Sen line is less than 10 pips from our entry price, we will use a minimum 10 pips for the initial stop losses. This is because there are occasions where the Keijin Sen line can end up on top of our entry price and we could get knocked out of the trade near as soon as we got into it. Better safe than sorry. Whatever we use though, be it the 10 pip minimum or the Keijin Sen line, each of our sub trades will be risking 1% of our capital to that distance. For the doctorate level mathematicians, that is a total of 2% capital risk for each trade. Hopefully those rules help keep our money managed. Our charts will be using the 15 minute time frame. This time frame feeds into our decision of that 10 pip minimum stop loss. If you are trading a different time frame, you will likely want to reconsider the minimum distance of your stop loss. We've gone for a time frame that moves pretty quickly, but it's not fast this finger one minute chart type situation. We will have to maintain some patience with 15 minutes per candle, but we don't have enough patience to just keep ourselves on one chart. We are going to be looking at three forex pairs to try and increase our chance of finding trades, be them winners or losers. Our three pairs will be the Great British Pound US Dollar, aka the Cable, the Euro Japanese Yen Pair, aka the Yuppie, and the Australian Dollar Canadian Dollar Pair, aka Big Commonwealth. We'll also be making a note of what happens in each and every one of our trades. Those notes will be stored in a file that shall henceforth be known as the journal, an effective method towards helping a true analysis of a strategy. Do I have faith in this Ichimoku strategy to make profits? No, not really. But these entry signals, they are heavily taught left, right and center from Ichimoku fans. So let's jump onto the charts and see what happens. These are our charts and it is almost 10 past 11, 11.08 and 24 seconds to be precise. Our three charts all on the 15 minute time frame, pound US dollar, the cable on the left, yuppie in the middle, the euro Japanese yen and big commonwealth Australian dollar Canadian dollar there on the right. All three of them currently with a price below the Kumo cloud. So we are looking for sell trades, but all three of them also with the Tenkin Sen line and the quicker white line beneath the Keijin Sen line. That means if we were to assume that price is going to stay below the Kumo cloud, we will need a retracement that causes a recross of the Keijin Sen line and then for it to come back beneath it as well. Otherwise, we could hope for a full reversal that takes price all the way back up through the cloud, getting us into a buy trade above the cloud. Doesn't look like it at the moment though, we have seen a lot of downward momentum on all these charts. If it starts to reach new lows on these two as well, we could suddenly find that it is a long while before we get into a trade. Let's have a look at the economic calendar, see if there's any events getting in our way today. And really minimal stuff on the calendar today and not much at all, one of the lightest days I've seen. Monday is usually quite light and you often do get national holidays on Mondays. Not this day for national holidays, but what have we had? Asia session, Bank of Japan, a few numbers on the economic outlook over there. They're all kind of looking at what do you think about business conditions? How do you feel about the economy? Are things good for you? Yes or no? Large all industry capex was up 9.3% against a forecast of 1.6. And then from the other three surveys, if it's above zero, that means it's an improvement on the previous. But a number below zero would mean a deterioration. So we see the large manufacturing outlook, that is 13 actual against forecast 19. So even though it's a miss and it's disappointing in that sense for them, it's still comfortably above zero. And similarly in the large manufacturing index, so an actual of 18, which does match the previous of 18, but it's a miss on the forecast of 25. By the large non-manufacturing index, that came in at a nine, so we're above the zero benchmark again. And it beat the forecast as well. The forecast was down at one, right at that zero balancing level. So overall, not too bad from Japan, not too shabby. Singapore unemployment rate, that was 2.6% actual with a match on the previous and on the forecast, holding it low there. That's the Asia session, nothing at all in the European session. And even the American session is very sparse. 130 Brazilian central bank focus market report comes out every week. Two o'clock Indian CPI year on year. 
2 o'clock OPEC monthly oil market report, 3 o'clock Bundesbank executive board member Beerman makes a speech, 7 o'clock the Bank of England financial stability report and the FPC meeting minutes, and 11.45 which is basically tomorrow at this point because it's in New Zealand, the food price index month on month. And that is literally everything, so yeah, nothing that should have an impact on us. Though it is a Monday, maybe someone has been planning something sinister over the weekend and they are ready to drop it now as a wild card to our charts. We can't really prepare for that, but there's no economic events as we see that should shunt off these currency pairs. We'll stick it out on the charts and see what comes next. Just past 12 o'clock, not really any closer to a trade entry. We have seen price retreat into the Kumo cloud on both the cable and the yuppie pairs. Also come back up on the Aussie dollar CAD, but still a ways away from the cloud over there. Not much action for us at the minute. As we roll into one o'clock, we are gonna see a crossover on the Great British Pound US dollar. There it is at the 10 consent at the white line it crosses above the Keijan Sen. Price was in the cloud. It actually did make a high above the cloud. So that was pretty close to an entry, but it receded from there back into the cloud. No signal, but if price can come back down, then potentially we might get that recross and then hopefully get us onto a winning trade. Nothing much closer on the other two pairs. Euro yen, the yuppie in the middle. Price whip soaring up and down. Looks like it wants to keep on going down as the ten consent chases it. And on the Aussie caddy, just seeing a bit of a retracement now. Don't know if that's going to turn into a full on reversal, but we sure have seen quite a big price drop over the last hour or so. Well, we'll continue to wait for a signal whenever that may come. 1.30, here we go, Brazilian Central Bank Focus Market Report. No impact. Quarter past two now, and we are still no close to a signal, but the Aussie caddy over here, what about this has been, the last period in particular, pushing once again, sharp V-shaped dip and back out there. If you can time that in and time it back out, major props to you. Great British Pound US dollar on the left, price still just kind of wishy-washy in and out of the upside of the cloud, so not looking at a signal there. And the yuppie in the middle, just been ranging all morning really, has come back up a bit, but we don't look like we're getting a crossover to the north anytime soon. And then if we do, we've got to get the crossover with price outside of this cloud. Had the Indian inflation as well, actually came in at 4.91% against the forecast 5.31%. That's the year on year, so even though it's not ideal, it's better than the forecast. Three o'clock here, and the last candle on every one of these charts, a big red appears. Price dropping on all of them. Pound US dollar is the only one that could poise to see a crossover with price if price can get through the cloud. You could easily see it drifting downwards right into the middle of it, but that is our nearest one to a signal at the moment. 3.30, looking at the Australian dollar, Canadian dollar, Tenken Sen has just closed above the Kijun Sen for the first time. And again, it made a sneaky high above the Kumo cloud there. Could have led us into a bit of a bad entry. See what happens with price next there. Meanwhile, Euro Yen is coming up as well. Might see a crossover if we can find new highs. Not going to be getting there unless price rockets. But there's always the return. Meanwhile, the pound US dollar, that had looked like it was coming down. Like we could have seen at the Tenken Sen along with price beneath the Kumo cloud. But a big return over the last candle from the lows down there. Well, we do see the euro yen on the rise. You never know. Maybe we do get that buy signal. Let's zoom out now. It would have a very long way to go through the cloud to get above it. And the Australian dollar, Canadian dollar. If that breaks through the cloud now, we have missed the crossover. Seems like we might be destined to miss every signal today. And we did see a big push into the cloud last period on that euro yen pair. Didn't make it through though. Now instantly coming back down. Saw a major push on the Great British Pound US dollar as well. Look at that run, 0.2% almost in the last two periods. Price well above the cloud there. Going to start getting into the peak of the day for volume over the next hour or so. So we get a move we can take advantage of. And there is still not too much for us an hour on. But if we can get that 10 consent across the Keijin Sen on the Yuppie, this is the closest. It needs to avoid the cloud that's coming up though. Very ominous cloud. Not sure if we'll see it, but it looks a lot more likely than the currency pairs on the flanks, the cable and big commonwealth. Just after quarter past five, and we did see massive sell-offs on the Great British Pound US dollar and the Euro Yen in the last period. It's been very whipsawry, and we are at peak volatility now. It looks like we are almost getting a crossover. We cannot take an entry signal on this Euro Japanese Yen from just the lines being on top of one another. We have to see them cross. We need to see an actual white pixel make it through that blue line. It's very tight. Might get that signal soon. Crazy candle over here on the Great British Pound US dollar. What a drop. We saw a big drop there 
and then two green candles on retracement before it smashes through the cloud. No surrender, no hesitations, no uncertainty about that. Down it goes. Don't see a cross because they are on top of one another. And this is what we're seeing on the Euro Yen as well. Tenkin and Kijun in unison. This is the candle that's keeping the high up. So if we count back and we say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it should drop off in a couple periods. And we'll get an entry as this pound US dollar continues to push down. Wow, we'll get across there as well. Our patience should pay off in five minutes' time. We are looking at dual trades, just like buses, nothing all day, and then two at once. Great British pound at US dollar. So that's looking like a sell trade. We got the white poking across the blue now. Just need a price to stay closed outside of the Kumo cloud. And same on the euro yen. If price stays outside of the cloud, there's the crossover. It'll be a sell trade. Good potential here. 15 seconds until the close. Doesn't look like we're going to get the signal on the pound US dollar. Could still reverse at the last second, but currently looking like price is going to close inside the Gumo cloud. However, the euro yen, let's just wait it out. Three seconds to go. Seems like we are going to get the trade here. And we do. It is a sell trade with the crossover. So you can see exactly how our risk is calculated on screen now. And we're starting with $5,669.62 and risking 1% per sub trade. So that gets us in with two sub trades at 0.64 standard lots. Let's set it off before we miss the move. Had to go for 10 pips on that one because if we see how tight it is here, it's only about three pips until the stop loss. So in fact, we're not going to take trades off the pound US dollar or the Aussie dollar Canadian dollar. Now we can close those off. And let's just focus on our Euro Japanese yen. So we're going to set the starting stop loss on both of these trades at 100 points. And we're going to mirror the take profit for that on sub trade A, 100 points. Right at the low of the day there, might be able to get towards that support level, could take a bit. Otherwise the stop loss is right up towards the top side of the cloud. If the trade moves to our favour, we will trail the stop loss forward. We won't wait until we get 10 pips in favor. That's what will happen if we set our trading stop loss. If we go in here and set that as 100 points, what will happen is we'll wait until we get 10 pips to our favor, which will be here, and then it will kick in. But we are going to trade it as we go if the Keijun moves that way. Now we're in there. We've finally got our trade. Currently moving to our favor. Let's see what happens. Price with the rush up there hits our stop loss. Well, that was quite wide to our stop loss. Let's just pop the ask price line on here yeah, so you can see why it got hit. Not a good trade at all. How long were we in it? Just under 40 minutes. We got in here. It was a sell trade as the Tenkan went under the Kijun. Price under the Kumo cloud, but immediate reversal. We see price goes up, up again, and up a third time. Three strikes, and we are out of the trade. Loss of $116.82. That is thereabouts 2% of our capital. Not too surprising that the most often taught signal fails at the first hurdle. Well, we got plenty of time to see if it can work at all. We'll be back tomorrow for another session, and we'll try again to get profits from the Ichimoku indicator. Let's just have a quick look at the trade in the journal before we go. There it is in all its glory. Pretty disappointing start. Does put us on the back foot for the rest of the strategy, and certainly doesn't make us feel optimistic about this Ichimoku crossover. But all we need is one really strong trading stop loss, and we will gun it into profit. All you have to do is believe in the heart of the charts, and I'm sure it'll come true. Back tomorrow.